Hello friends, I hope that you're well. A question that I've been receiving a lot recently is, when can I rebook my backpacking trip? I'm scared to rebook because I'm afraid that something might happen. And my response to that, best not to book anything until we have some more certainty. I genuinely don't think that you're gonna gain anything from booking in advance, so hang tight, let's all just be patient and wait and see. Of course it's not ideal, but I think it is just the hard pill that we all need to swallow right now. But that is not to say that we can't plan, it's not to say we can't research, and it's not to say we can't dream. And let me tell you, I have been doing a lot of that. So much so that I actually have some provisional travel plans. And whichever I end up doing will depend on whatever happens at the time, which countries are sort of safe to travel first, what time of year it is when it happens, and what countries are good to visit that time of year, what my finances and other commitments are looking like at that time, of course. There are so many factors to consider, but that's why I think it's good to have lots of options. But before I I tell you all of my travel options, I would like to introduce the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network. A VPN is now pretty much essential for me on a daily basis at home, but also especially when I travel. As you may know, when you sign into a public Wi-Fi network, like when you're at the airport, for example, your device is at risk of being hacked. However, when you have a VPN switched on, your connection is private and those risks are eliminated. Not only that, but a VPN allows your device to travel virtually throughout the world so you can do things like watch the US Netflix which has way more shows than we do in the UK and the cool thing about Surfshark in particular is that you can use the VPN on all of your devices with just the one account so I have it set up on my phone my laptop and my iPad and not only that but Surfshark are offering you guys a humongous discount of 85% off and an extra three months for free when you use my code backpacking or using the link in the description and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee so you literally have nothing to lose. So, my travel options. Let's start with the one that I want to do the most, shall we? This may surprise some of you, but I would like to make a return to Southeast Asia. The classic Southeast Asia route. Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. This is the first place I ever went backpacking back in 2013 with my two friends Grace and Cheryl, and I have three reasons for wanting to return. Reason number one is I am super curious to see how it has changed. It's been seven years since I went there, and I know that tourism is just constantly booming there so I think it would just be really interesting to see and experience it as a 26 year old actually I'll probably be 27 at the time as opposed to a 19 year old I feel like it might be quite different and I also feel like the countries themselves and the tourism there might have changed quite a lot reason number two I'm super keen to make loads of YouTube content there for you guys after Australia it's the destination that I get asked about the absolute most but my travel advice and recommendations is seven years old and probably very very outdated so from a business perspective I think it's in my best interests to go back there and be able to create updated content for the internet and reason number three there are actually quite a lot of spots that I missed back in 2013 that I would really like to visit for the first time so I think what I would like to do is start in Burma which I did not visit before travel through Thailand now Vietnam and Cambodia did not go to Cambodia before and then down Thailand and into Malaysia as well because I've only been to Kuala Lumpur and I think there's lots of in Malaysia to discover as well. So there's a lot of reasons for me to go there. I would obviously travel solo and I think that this trip would take me about five months. So it really would be a big one. In an absolute ideal world, I would leave in January, 2021 but I don't know if that's too ambitious at the moment. Obviously, that's just something that I'm going to have to wait and see. Opción numero dos is to spend three months, más o menos, in a Spanish-speaking country or traveling through Spanish-speaking countries. I am still learning Spanish for 10 hours a week on Zoom classes with We Institute. Y ahora estoy en nivel B1.2. ¿Cuál es emocionada? Y me gustaría continuar aprendiendo español en un país que lo hable. The most likely trip for this would be to continue on the trip that COVID sent me home from. So that would either be heading back to Colombia and studying in Bogota for a bit, or heading straight to El Salvador, surfing there for a bit, then heading into Mexico. I'm really keen to explore um, the Oaxaca region. I don't even know if that's how you say it. And then probably ending in Mexico City. I've never been there. Option number three, backpacking India. Solo backpacking India for at least three months. Just completely exploring the country. It's huge, it's intense. Am I ready for the challenge of India yet? I'm not sure. This isn't a top priority for me because I feel like it's something that I might wanna do as a big challenge when I turn 30. 
but since I need to have lots of options for next year, this is one of them. Option number four is a solo backpacking trip through Eastern Europe. This is something that I was fantasizing about a couple of months ago. I'm not so sure I'd get an interrailing pass though. I feel like I'd want to really challenge myself with hitchhiking, meeting locals, exploring alternative modes of transport. I don't know, interrailing just seems a bit too easy. Travelling by train is luxurious and it's lovely to do every once in a while, but I feel like I'm just craving more challenge and adventure than that. I've spoke about it before that if nothing goes wrong on your trip, if nothing challenges you and everything is comfortable, what have you really overcome or learned? So that's just my personal thoughts towards that, but I think backpacking through Eastern Europe would be really fun. There's so many countries there that I've never been to and I'd love to explore, and it's also a great way to like tick a lot of countries off the list. I think I would want to travel for four to five months doing this. There is one thing that I have set in stone for next year, and that is that I am attending a wedding in Toronto, Canada in July. So no matter what happens with my plans, I know I have to be in Canada in July. So I just need to bear that in mind when I make decisions about these plans later on down the line. But I'm so excited. I've never been to Canada. Well, only on a layover, but that doesn't count. And as for travel around Canada, that would be really cool. But if I'm completely honest, I'm just not looking that far in advance at this point in time. And as for the rest of 2020, <sighs> I do think it is realistic to travel, but keeping it fairly local, fairly short, keeping the plans until last minute and probably not staying in hostels. Like there are different ways of traveling and making it work. Spoiler or exclusive, whichever way you like to look at it. I have actually booked a flight to Greece for the second week of September. It cost me 65 pounds return. Yep. So my thought with that was if rules and regulations do change in Greece in the meantime, it's not the end of the world to lose 65 quid or the airline might even refund me, who knows? I'm going with my best friend Leah and we haven't booked any accommodation yet. We don't plan on booking any accommodation until a few days beforehand. And that's the reality of our plan. I actually secretly love the fact that if it does go ahead, it's just gonna be super, super spontaneous. And then going into October, November and December, I'd love to do a bit more travel around the UK. Let me know where you'd like to see me travel in the UK because I'm definitely open to your suggestions. I might even try and get myself over to Ireland. I've never been and I've heard it's a great time. I think it would be the perfect place to just go for either a few days or maybe up to a week, but I haven't done any research on Ireland, so that's definitely something that I can start doing. But I do not plan to start any big backpacking trips in 2020. I just can't see it happening at this point. I have my fingers crossed for 2021. For all of us, I really, really do. Being at home for the past couple of months, I actually really see it as a positive. I've managed to get so many things done that I would never normally make time for, but let's be honest, I'm ready to go away again. I'm excited to get out traveling again, and I think I'm just gonna be doing so much planning over the next couple of weeks and couple of months, and I will be fully prepared when it's time to go, wherever it may be, but that's exciting. It's kind of exciting to not know. And I think that's how we should all approach our future planning and travel plan, as opposed to being set on one thing, getting yourself hyped up for something that might not happen. Best not to be disappointed. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.